Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. Now, in Corinthians, when Paul writes to the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 15, he he explains these things about the resurrection that the early church, you know, they were not they were novices to this whole resurrection idea. So Paul gives them details. He says, God has given us all a body just as he wished. In verse 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 38, to each, it says, uh, uh, the, the seeds of a body of its own. It says, the flesh is not, uh, is not the same, all flesh is not the same flesh. But there's the flesh of men, there's also the flesh of beasts, there's the flesh of birds, there's the flesh of fish. He says, and, and there are also heavenly bodies besides these earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly is one and the glory of the earthly is another. He's trying to describe, you know, even in the animal kingdom, there's different fleshes that are assigned by God to the different animals and to, the, and to mankind. But he says, don't forget, God, if God can create different bodies for the different animals and for the men and the women, then can he make heavenly bodies? This is what he's pointing out to them. They, they didn't actually perceive this. Hey, man, we have a really big God. He made all of us. What's the problem with him making some extra heavenly bodies? That's in his wheelhouse, you know. That's what he's saying. And then he says, there's the glory of the sun and the glory of the moon. There's the glory of the stars. For stars, it says, differ from one star to another in glory. He says, and so also in the resurrection from the dead, it is sown in perishable bodies, but it's raised in imperishable bodies. It is sown in dishonor, but it's raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, but it is raised in power. It is sown with a natural body, but it is raised with a spiritual body. And if there is a natural body, Paul says, then there also is a spiritual body. Do you guys know that the early church didn't actually know this? I mean, you guys probably grew up learning this in Sunday school, and you're going, this is old school, pastor. Everybody knows this. We're all going to get a spiritual body made by God. But look at verse 45. So as it is written, the first man, Adam, he became a living soul. But the last Adam, who's the last Adam? Jesus. He became a life-giving spirit. However, the spiritual is not first, but the natural comes first. Then the spiritual just like Jesus told Nicodemus, first you have to be born of, of the flesh, that which is born of water is water, that which is born of spirit is spirit. What, what is the water talking about? You know, when a baby's born, the water breaks. We say the baby's coming. That's born in the flesh. That which is born of flesh is flesh. But Jesus said that which is born of spirit is spirit. And the spirit comes next. You might be born already physically, but if you haven't had a second birth, like Jesus said, if you're not born again, your spirit hasn't been brought to life, then you haven't experienced all God has for you. Now, the first man, it says, is from the earth, earthy, but the second man is from heaven. And as earthy, so also those who are earthy. It. And as it is to the heavenly, so also it is to the heavenly. Just as we have become in the image of the earthly, so also we will bear the image of the heavenly. Now, brethren, I say this, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. How many of you know that? This flesh can't go into heaven. It wouldn't, it wouldn't last. Nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. But I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. We're not all going to die. He says, but we will all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. The last trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed. The, imper the perishable must put on the imperishable. The mortal must put on the immortality. But when the perishable will have put on the imperishable, and this mortal have, will have put on immortality, then will come about a saying that is written in Isaiah 25, verse 8. O death, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? Hosea 13, remember? 
Hosea wrote this. He said, where's your sting, death? You don't have a stinger anymore. It's like a bee that you pluck the stinger out of. You can't hurt me. Death cannot hurt us as believers because there's no sting left. Because we, this perishable, gets to put on imperishable. And the sting of death is sin, but the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through the Lord Jesus. Therefore, Paul says, my beloved, brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your toil is not in vain in the Lord. Guys, sometimes we just give up too easy. We forgot the big picture. God's, God has set it up so you're going to have this body swallowed up by a, a glorious body. This mortal gets to put on immortality. This corruption gets to put on incorruption. I, my spirit inside of me testifies every day I look in that mirror that that ain't me. I am positive. I am much better looking than the image that's reflecting. I'm like, I, there's a problem here. And I look at that and I think, you know, I'm really glad this promise that this perishable gets to be swallowed up by imperishable. When you see me in my glorified body, you're going to go, whoa, Pastor, you're much better looking now. We see what you're talking about. You know, we just thought we were stuck with you. You won't. I, it's, I'm upgrading. Okay, I know. How many of you ever felt that way? You looked in the mirror that that's not me. I am sure that is not really that me who's inside here. That's not me. It's because it's perishing. The tent you are dwelling in, and it's called the tent by Paul. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, this body, and into chapter 6, it's just a, it's a tent for your spirit. You're only using, you only use tents for camping. Just to hang out for, by the way, I don't want to do perpetual camping. I've done a lot of camping. I like to camp for a while and go home and use a hot shower. Camping is good for a little bit, but after a while, you know, you just like the grime, the sand, the, you know, you're just like, I need a shower. I need a clean bed. I need home. And it, just like we long for that in this earthly example, the Bible says our spirit groans for our eternal home. That your, that your spirit is wired to go, I need that eternal house from God. I, need, I can't wait. Anyone here can't wait for that upgrade? Thinking that would be good? Now, it says not all of us are going to sleep. Not all of us are going to die. My son said that to me this morning. He said, Dad, the, it's kind of cloudy, you know. What if Jesus comes back before we set up service? I said, praise the Lord. I'm so tired. I don't even know if I'm going to make it through the message. And my wife's over there in Arizona with her dad, and we're praying for him for his surgery tomorrow and praying for, really, for Aaron's dad. You know, I'm like, God, if you just want to come and skip all for all my, my dad, my father-in-law, Bob's a believer, his father's a believer, come quickly, Lord Jesus. We won't even have to die. Would that be a great way to end the sermon? Today I'm telling you, Christ is risen. And you go, yeah, he's risen indeed. And all of a sudden, -ba -da, Daniel goes, what? I wonder what would happen if we heard that trump right now. We'd be gone, right? We don't have to break down. We just leave the tents, the sound system. They'll be going like, wow, I found a guitar. I won't care. We'll be gone. We'll be like in the presence of the Lord. And we'll be like, wow. Now, I, I just marvel because so many people don't know this glorious. This is good news. This is really good news. This was the news promised from Genesis. But see, this last Adam is a type of the first Adam. And the first Adam, I don't know if you notice this, this whole story comes full circle. The first Adam is created by God, made alive by his breath. Put in the garden. Not good for him to be alone. I'll put him to sleep. He put him to sleep and took a rib. Remember Genesis 2 and 3? He took the rib and he made it into what? A woman. Eve. And said, here, Eve in, Chaka in Hebrew is um, living one presented a living one to Adam. And he said, she shall be called woman because she was taken, woman, taken from man. 
She is part of me. Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She's part of me. He didn't take her, by the way, from the heel bone. You guys that want to step on your wives. He took her from the rib. What's the rib do? What's it protects the heart. He takes her from a very precious place and, and, and forms her to be that protection of his heart. Girls, you don't get it. That, that's where you design. We need help. We, you know, us guys figure this out. Help, mate, we need help. You got to protect the heart. And here, he says, here's your bride. And they're living naked and not ashamed in the garden, this perfect garden. And then deception. The serpent deceives. Sin enters. The wages of sin gets them booted. Kicked out of the garden into the world. That's the first Adam. Started off living in a garden, put to sleep, woke up, sees his bride, kicked out into the world. Second Adam comes. He's born in the world, in a stable. Right? Laid in a manger. Grows up, put on a cross, and then dies. And where do they put him? In a garden tomb. Right? That's what, in a garden tomb, it says, in which no one... You, you read your Good Friday message. Just By the way, it's just a page back from the part we were reading in John chapter 20. Just turn back a couple pages. You'll see it right there. They laid him in a garden tomb which no one had ever, ever used. Don't worry. He's only going to rent it for three days. He's not staying. They can use it later, but it, it's only a temporary visit. And they put him in the garden tomb, and he rises three days later. And Mary, I find this interesting, the first person that gets to see Jesus risen is a woman. Not the guys. Oh, they got there first, right? They ran. They, she was there. The angel said, go tell. She, but the woman got the news first. Christ is risen. And then... Who gets to see him risen first? Mary. And Mary, who did she suppose him to be? The gardener. Oh, that's coincidence, right? Coincidinky. Just happen to think it's the gardener. No, it's not coincidence. It's just what, like, what the Hebrew culture teaches as shadows and types. The Messiah fulfills all these little subtle things. See, to the Jewish person, this is the stuff they feed on. They're like, wow, that's the stuff that shows God is really God. You know, because only he can show off to the very minutest little detail. Only he can make no fish be caught all night and then say, put your net on the other side and 153 fish are now in the net and yet the net doesn't break. And then when they get to land, there's already fish and loaves on the, on the rack, already cooking, come eat. we got to talk. Peter, do you love me? What was Peter doing? Fishing for fish. What did Jesus say he called him to do three years earlier? Leave the fishing for fish, and I'll make you fishers of what? Men. He had already got sidetracked after Jesus died. Very short period of time has passed, and Peter's already gone back to what he knew before, and Jesus has to re- Focus him on what he was, what he was called to do by Jesus, and that's fish for men, not fish. Peter, you love me. Tend my sheep. Not fish for fish. Peter, do you love me? Shepherd my flock. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Quit going fishing. You're supposed to take right. It's only been a few days. I think he did it in a way got Peter's attention, though. You guys know church history. Does Peter go on fishing, or does he go on pastoring? He goes and pastors, takes care of the flock of God. He heard what Jesus... But see, he had to grow, too, just like all of us. We all need to be refocused sometimes. We all need to be reminded. And therefore, Paul says, we all need to remember to be steadfast, immovable, he says, and, and ab abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that our toil is not in vain in the Lord. You guys know that when you do something for the Lord, it's not in vain. Everything you do, 
Every time you get up early and go help someone, every time you stop on the side of the road because the Lord tells you to, and you give that person a helping hand when they broke down, or, or you stop and visit that one that is lonely at the, at the nursing home, or you go and, and, and you, you, you visit someone in prison. Every time you do any of those works unto the Lord, Jesus said, you do it to the least of my brethren, and you've done it what? To me. And Paul says, be steadfast in that. Immovable. Don't forget to do the work what God has for you to do in the Lord. Guys, what if the Lord is coming today? Did you do the work He wanted you to do this week? Or are you going, oh, wait, wait. Hang on, Lord. Stay there for a second. I, got, I know you wanted me to call my auntie and tell her, you know, we got to patch that up. And, or I know I should let go of the, work through that problem. If there's anything comes to mind right now, you better get it done. Because I sure hope you're not holding up the train. You know, what if the Lord's going, I'm still waiting, Sue. I'm just picking on you. Nah, she's awake. She's just... I have to be careful what I say, you know. Pete. It's a great thing about having an intimate church. You can actually know people's names. <laughs> cool. Got to be careful, though, what part you use them in. If there's any part you're not taking care of, take care of it. Be steadfast in the toil of the Lord. Let's be doing the Lord's work, guys. We don't know how long it's going to be. How many believe that Trump could sound any minute? Is there any prophecy we're waiting for that still has to happen? No. Not to my knowledge. I mean, I, it could be any moment. And I say that not like I'm, I'm, tell, I'm, I'm telling you because the Bible says to be dressed in readiness. We should be ready. What if the Lord says, I'm coming now? We should go, oh, all right. And by the way, that's a very good sobering thing for my spirit. It makes me toe the right line. It makes me stay in line when I think, hey, he could come right now. Am I ready? And if you're not, get ready. I mean, we're talking the most powerful good news there is, the, the completion of the gardener coming back into the garden. He came in dead. The first Adam went in alive, right? Was put to sleep, brought back to life, presented his bride. The second Adam, Jesus, came into the world alive, and then they did what? They killed him, put him dead in the garden, and then what's he do? comes back to life. He does the opposite. The first one went in the garden alive and died. The second Adam went in the garden dead and came out alive. Do you see that? It's the full circle of the story completed with the last Adam. The last Adam fulfills the whole cycle. Life is now brought back in where death has reigned. From Adam until Jesus, death had power. But now the scripture declares, O oh death, O oh death, where is thy sting? Where is your victory? You don't have any more stinger. Because if you believe in Jesus, though your body will, 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 will cease, your heart might stop beating, your brain waves go, you will live. And you'll just move from this tent to a mansion. We're upgrading to mansions, guys. You get to upgrade from this earthly body to a heavenly one. Paul said, don't you know they have a different glory? There's a glory of everything down here, different glories. But there's a better glory that lies ahead. And that's good news. I get to, I get to tell you, that's the part we are celebrating today. Christ, was, Christ is risen. He is what? He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. That's the Easter message for you today with the whole Adam in the garden, kicked out of the garden, Jesus the Adam, dead, brought back in the garden, comes alive, and then, oh, there's Mary. The first one, the bride, picture of the bride, brought, the Jews would say, that's a picture of the bride, full circle, like the whole story, brought around the horn. I said, yep. You think that's coincidence? No, it's just good news. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, so much for your word. Thank you for the sweetness of promises that you have made and you have kept. And to that, Lord, we give you great praise and honor. Hallelujah. Praise be to you, Lord. You are worthy of praise. We give you thanks, Lord. We ask you would take us now from here in the power of your spirit. 
Help us to do that toil that you have for us, Lord, cheerfully and unto you, Lord, knowing it's not in vain. And Lord, if it's okay, like my son prayed this morning, come quickly for us all, that we would love to go and be in your presence. Just give us perseverance until that day you do come. We ask it in Jesus' name, your son's precious name. And everyone who agreed with me said, Amen. Amen. Would you stand with me, let's sing a closing song and send you off in the joy of the Lord on this Resurrection Sunday. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.